guys. Happy New Year. Uh, where did 2018 go? <laughs> the years get faster and faster. Uh, I don't know. I know there was a point in 2018 where I was like, oh my gosh, can this be done? Um, incredibly stressful, but uh, overall the years move, I guess, different when you get older. I don't know. Either way, for the first day of 2019, I thought I would look back at my 2018 and kind of just recap the year. Um, I'm doing it for a couple different reasons. One, if I ever feel like going back and being like, what did 2018 do for me? I have a video diary of sorts. Also, I feel like this can be used as getting everybody kind of on the same page. I know there's um, at least one thing that I never ever announced. Uh, I don't know when to announce stuff. I'm not, not very much with the giving, you know, announcing personal things. I'm not very good at it. Um, the only times really is to do it during an unboxing and that's not what those videos are for. They're to unbox things. So uh, my life is relatively boring or, you know, really boring. So I don't have enough stuff to do a video on. It's just like one random piece of information. So, oh well, I end up keeping it to myself and then I forget that I didn't say anything. And then when I go to, um, I don't know, like mention something in a vlog, then I'm like, oh yeah, uh, they don't know my situation has changed. So this is a way to hopefully get everybody on the same page. I also don't know if anyone's ever interested in stuff like this, so I guess if you are, you are, and if you aren't, you aren't. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to start at the beginning. I'm kind of doing this, uh, by the seat of my pants sort of thing. I did it that way on purpose to really name only the things that were bigger and impactful. Um, I did a bunch of, t you know, a, a ton of awesome things throughout the year, hanging with my family and, and visiting and doing all that. But those are little things. Those are um, normal things, I guess. Um, so this would be kind of an out of the ordinary sort of situation, the bigger events, changes, uh, self-realizations, that kind of thing. So starting at the beginning, January, uh, my year actually started out at a very high note, started with a bang. I went for the second time in my adult life to Disney World at the very end of January, beginning of February. Uh, I stayed on property this time and became an annual pass holder. Uh, both of those are first for me. So that was, it made the trip so much more amazing. It was uh, so much more magical. I can't really describe to you the difference. Um, I mean, I guess I could, but this isn't the video for that. The difference of staying on property versus staying at a, like a VRBO, like what we did the first time. Um, it's an incredible difference and it definitely made the trip more magical. Um, also on that trip we went to Universal Studios again for the second time in my adult life and in that time it was the third, I think third annual Harry Potter Appreciation Celebration and I can't even begin to tell you, I mean if you saw that vlog, which I I don't know. It's sort of embarrassing to look back at it. Uh, I fangirled so hard through that whole thing. Cosplay was amazing. Uh, we didn't do the celebration properly. We opted to do the park instead of stand in line all day. And we did a little bit of the exhibits and stuff. We did the smaller arena, which made it worth it. But uh, if we ever go back, during that time frame, I would like to do the celebration 
uh, properly or like completely how did that go around but don't know if we'll ever get back but it was definitely a bucket list thing and I'm so very glad that I was able to do it that trip was so magical that my mom and I discussed um, sort of tentatively planned a Christmas trip to Disney World um, later that same year 2018 most of that hinged on me working in retail vacation blackout I needed special permission to go came back talked to my store manager um, had a good conversation about it and I got permission it was great uh, made reservations made a very tentative um, announcement on the channel and everything seemed to be good to go a couple months later my store manager got a promotion which was great for him he got promoted to a corporate position and we got a new store manager who we dealt with before uh, he came in and covered while my store manager went to vacation for a month and at the time he was super cool super upbeat super positive but then when he permanently took over the store he 180'd and did like a Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde sort of thing and he was horrible uh, completely unprofessional really rude very demeaning um, his method of motivation was to essentially tell you you sucked at your job whether you did or not um, for someone who was good at their job to be told you sucked every day um, drove my motivation into the ground so it was very very hard to go to work um, and I loved that job it was it was one of the jobs that I knew that I was good at I loved it there was nothing like it was one of those love the job hate the boss and it was very difficult to get up to go to work every day so um I I don't know I think it was like a month or something maybe two after he took over I remembered the Disney trip so I said something to him to kind of give him a heads up and he told me that I wasn't going anywhere he didn't give me permission therefore I was not leaving um, at that time it was still like are you kidding are you not because he liked to hide his rude comments behind jokes He'd say something mean and then you would look at him and he's like what you can't take a joke it's just a joke like funny haha it's like mm, are you sure though so i thought he was kidding and then he's like no you're going i didn't tell you you could go it's like but it happened a couple months before you took over and he's like it doesn't matter you're not leaving so long ridiculous conversation short he essentially told me that he hoped i could get a refund or it sucked to be me and we canceled that trip uh, couldn't go because my boss is a dick and um, that's where the Disneyland trip came from because we were determined to get to Disney in some fashion and he couldn't tell me I couldn't go in August because that's not part of the vacation blackout and whatever so by this point my motivation was absolutely zero so I was taking all of my time off that I could um, so the uh, middle of August, um, I had a medical conference um, that I attended with my mom. It, my mom actually had to go to the medical conference, I didn't. Um, I like going. It's a chill time. Sometimes I go to the lectures. I attended a really cool ketamine something in uh, tactical medical um, conference or uh, lecture and it was amazing. Um, other than that it was just me sitting in the room reading and then when she'd have break then I would meet her and then we'd walk around the exhibits we did that for or I did that for five days she had to go to class it was fun for me um, and then when I got back I think it was like two weeks a week and a half something like that then we went to Disneyland and it was like four days or so so minus the fact that I didn't feel very good the first couple days, um, it was a wonderful trip. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it was my very first trip. So another first for me. Also, we did coast to coast, Disney World and Disneyland in the same year. First time I've ever done that. Um, 
Disneyland is one that I would like to go back to someday, maybe stay on property this time. Uh, I really did miss the Disney bubble, but it was really good experience to go. Uh, they have a lot of really cool stuff there. Um, I, I have a review of the park and I'll leave it at that. In, in this time frame, I learned something about myself that is kind of silly. Considering my age, I didn't, I've always been, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but I'm almost always sick. The, or well, I think I'm always sick the first couple days of traveling. Uh, always, or almost always, and it's miserable, like I'm miserable for the first couple days. Headache, um, muscles are tense, like I'm physically ill, it's, it's not fun, and I just have always attributed it to stress. Um, I don't handle crowds very well, um, I'm okay for a little while, depending on where we are, like Universal I don't do so well because we're always at Harry Potter World and that's cramped. Um, it's it's much more narrow. I don't have such issues with Disney because it's more wide open spaces. Uh, and we tend to go at a lower crowd time. So I, I don't do well um, with crowds, but I think of it as a like situational awareness. I'm always aware of people and it's a security thing like I don't want to be pickpocketed, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to bump into anybody, get run over by a scooter, a stroller, a child, don't want to run a child over. So it's always really stressful because I'm like aware all the time instead of being able to let go and just relax. I, I can't do that. So I'm always stressed out um, when I get too many people around me because it's too many people to keep an eye on, I guess. Um, with the Disneyland trip, I learned that it's not really so much stress. I had sort of two epiphanies, I guess, kind of close together, and it made one gigantic epiphany that I realized it wasn't stress I was dealing with. Um, I w was wound so tight on the drive to the airport that I, um, if I felt like if someone would have touched me, I would have shattered. Um, and then at the airport, we, I don't know, there was like some forecast that it was going to be a bit of a bumpy ride and I get motion sick so I took, like, I normally take Dramamine but uh, for shorter flights I don't really have to. And I took a Dramamine like this time and for the most part Dramamine doesn't do anything for me other than not make me sick or it allows me to not be sick, um, you know, during a bumpy ride or whatever. When I took this Dramamine, it was essentially the equivalent of a muscle relaxer. I felt so, like, relaxed. I felt so chill. It was almost stupid how different I felt and how much better I felt because of the Dramamine. And those two kind of put together, I realized that it wasn't stress that I was dealing with. I've been dealing with anxiety for I don't know how long. Uh, so apparently I'm... Uh, I suffer from relatively high anxiety, so much so that it makes me physically sick. Uh, who knew? Crazy. Uh, so now I gotta figure out, like, how to not, or like, how to keep my anxiety down when we travel so I don't get sick. Um, the reason I thought it was so, like, causing stress at this point, and the one thing, this is what I didn't ever announce, is at the very end of July, we're gonna backtrack now, um, cause this is, this is very convoluted. Everything happened at once. Um, I don't do change very well and this just messed my world up really bad. Uh, my boss, again, very unprofessional, rude, all of that. Uh, I, I don't even, I don't even know. We're gonna just say we had a very, ridiculous conversation that never should have taken place. Um, a previous boss, so I'm pretty much gonna say retail A, B, and C. So I worked at retail A, like 
with my previous boss. I was the assistant manager there. He got recruited with Retail B and took every one of his managers with him and then that's where I currently was. He left to go to Retail C and then he had been trying to recruit me ever since. So I kept, you know, turning him down whatnot because I was happy where I was, were content, I was good at my job, hated my boss. And I don't know, one of the times he tried to recruit me, my store manager heard about it, but what difference did it make? I turned him down like I'd always been and he started to harass my previous boss. Um, asking if he's stealing me, you know, he was harassing him at work and at home because at one point the two of them worked together um, at a different store for Retail B before um, my previous uh, boss left for Retail C. I don't know. I got, I was told and sent the screenshots for this conversation, which was highly ridiculous and incredibly unprofessional. I confronted my store manager about it and he lied and then uh, when I showed him the screenshots then he was mad that I had those screenshots and uh, in the midst of this conversation I decided that I was done. So I texted my previous boss and was like the next time that you have an opening I will take it. So it was probably like another week or so later, he texted me saying that the position he originally tried to give me uh, was open again and to get my stuff and let's go. So I put my two week notice in and left. So I'm now at another place and again, I don't do change well. Uh, this happened at the worst time possible because I started at the very end of July, um, right into the very beginning of August. I got no training. Um, my, the person who was previously in my position didn't do their job, so the store was incredibly behind. I was expected to get everything caught back up with no training. And then I left for the medical conference, came back almost immediately left for Disneyland and then came back. So my paychecks were half paychecks and my retail B was supposed to give me or like pay me out for my vacation pay and they didn't. So I'm like struggling financially by this point because I'm getting half paychecks from my new job. My old job's not giving me the payout that I'm supposed to, but I'm taking the vacation anyway. Um, it was just a very down, dark time at that point. So that's why I blamed what I was feeling on stress. Uh, I was so very stressed out. Um, turns out I was probably really stressed out, but I was also really high anxiety as well. Um, now, I'm still not sure if I made the right choice, but at the same time, it was the only choice I could make. I don't like this job uh, nearly as much. Uh, sometimes I don't like it at all, uh, it just depends on the day. I, I loved the other job, I just hated my boss. So it was just a very difficult decision. I was in the, between a rock and a hard place. So that whole little bit, I was at like a high and a low at the same time because Disneyland was fantastic, but yet I was real stressed out about the new job, stressed financially, stressed all these things but yet having a good time on vacation too. So it was it was a rough time at that point. Um, I'm kind of past that hump now. So um, the end of my year, um, mostly December, I guess, um, my channel hit a year anniversary. So that was a high note. And on top of that, um, I hit 100 subscribers, which is a milestone for me that I never actually thought I would come anywhere near. So the fact that I hit it and I believe I've surpassed it, maybe not a ton, but a little bit. And that's, that's huge for me. That's awesome. And that's you guys. And I thank you for that. Like that's my year in a nutshell. I don't really have a life uh, 
I read a lot. I guess I will say I did hit like a personal best for my reading. I don't know if there's any other book nerds that watch my channel or not, but uh, I'm a part of the Goodreads reading challenge and my personal best so far um, I ended the year with 329 books that I read so this is this is a personal best which makes me a nerd and that's okay <laughs> I'm I do nothing really but read I come I go to work and I come home and I read that that's literally my life but I like it that's I'm a hermit so it's okay but that is my 2018 uh, a look back at it highs and lows so be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video bye